Go. This is the uh, makeup lab for Unit 3's first lab properties of alkaline earth metals. The purpose. The arrangement of the elements on the periodic table is one of the most important achievements in modern chemistry. The physical and chemical properties of elements change in a regular pattern as you go both across the periods and down the columns of the periodic table. As a result, when the elements close to each other in a row or column are compared, they have many of the same properties. However, when these elements are farther away from each other in a row or column, as they are compared, they have more dissimilar properties. The elements in group 2 of the periodic table are known as the alkaline earth metal elements. Like all members of a group or family, they have certain properties that change in a regular pattern within the group. One of these properties is the ability to form a precipitate, a solid substance, as a result of a chemical reaction. The precipitate cannot dissolve in water and eventually settles to the bottom of the container. In this laboratory activity, you will examine the reactive properties of the alkaline earth metals and make conclusions about the patterns you observe. The description of setup. This setup for the lab includes the use of preloaded plastic pipettes with aqueous solutions of four alkaline earth metals, as well as three potassium compounds. You will react with them. And we have them here the potassium compounds and the alkaline earth metal element compounds. The reactions will be executed on a small scale reaction surface. And that's the surface right here. And we have the alkaline earth metal compounds down that particular first column, indicating the rows will have each of those. Noting that we have magnesium, calcium, strontium, and barium in group two of the periodic table. Down each row we have potassium carbonate, potassium sulfate, and potassium chromate, each with the formulas as indicated in the data table on the second side of your lab. The procedure. All right, so for the procedure here, kind of keep this as simple as possible. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to load up the reaction surface, which is basically just a sheet protector. Uh, we're going to load up the reaction surface with the potassium compounds. When you do that, you want to put just simply one drop on the um, reaction surface. It's very important, though, that when you do this, that you do not touch the pipette to the reaction surface, and that you, um, you do that in order to avoid uh, contaminating it. So once we do that, then we're going to cross-react it with the uh, alkaline earth metals. Remember, these are all aqueous solutions. Aqueous means just that they've been dissolved in water. So the first compound that we're going to use is the potassium carbonate. So I'm going to get the potassium carbonate pipette, and then I'm going to hold the pipette right over the, uh, the target, and I'm going to squeeze out just one drop. And then I'm going to move down the column and do the same to the remaining three targets. And then once that's done, then I'm done with potassium carbonate. Then I'm going to move on to the next one, which is the potassium sulfate, that's K2SO4, and I'm going to do the same thing. And just one drop on each one of these. And the last one, which is the uh, yellow compound, this is the uh, potassium chromate. One drop again on each of the surfaces, each of the targets. Okay, now we're going to cross-react it with the uh, alkaline earth metal. And again, what you're looking for is the presence of a precipitate. So if you see a precipitate, <clears throat> then you're going to mark on your data table PPT. And remember, if there is no precipitate, you must leave the square blank. Don't write no reaction, don't put n slash a or anything like that. Just leave it blank. So now we're going to take the magnesium and we're going to react across and we're looking for the formation of a precipitate. We'll zoom in once we're done so you have a clearer view of exactly what's going on here. Okay, so there's our magnesium reactions. Now we're going to do calcium. Strontium, just working our way down the alkaline earth metal family. Remember the alkaline earth metal is the second column from the left side of the periodic table. Two valence electrons ionized to form ions with a plus two charge. So that was strontium and now we're going to do the last one which is barium. Okay. So again, in a precipitate, one of the things that you're typically going to see is the precipitate 
for a lot of these, is this going to give the drop kind of a cloudy or a milky appearance? So that's what you're going to be looking for. If you see that, then you're going to indicate PPT on your lab sheet. If you don't, then you're going to uh, just leave the space blank. So this first row that you're looking at, this is the magnesium nitrate and the uh, potassium carbonate. This is the magnesium nitrate and the potassium sulfate. And the last one is the magnesium nitrate and the potassium chromate. Okay, now we're going to move down to calcium nitrate. And the first one that you're looking at, this is the potassium carbonate and the calcium nitrate. This is the potassium sulfate calcium nitrate reaction. And the last one is the potassium chromate calcium nitrate reaction. Okay, then we're on to the third row now. This is strontium, strontium nitrate, and potassium carbonate. And strontium nitrate and potassium sulfate. and strontium nitrate and potassium chromate. Okay, and the last row now is the barium nitrate and potassium carbonate. Then the barium nitrate, potassium sulfate. And lastly, the barium nitrate, potassium chromate. Again, for all those, you're looking for the formation of precipitate. Make sure that you fill out the appropriate information on your data table and then answer the subsequent questions. Don't forget to write your conclusion.